have a summary of all the different transformations that we've seen. If you'd like, you can pause the video and write these out for yourself in your own notes. At the bottom I have a note that just tells us that all vertical transformations we will see will always appear outside of the brackets of the function notation. And remember that all vertical transformations affect the y coordinates. Whereas all horizontal transformations, they always appear inside the brackets of the function notation. And of course, horizontal transformations affect the x coordinates. So today I'm going to show you a few different examples that you could see that would use all the types of transformations we've seen in the course. Please feel free to pause the video and try the question out yourself, and then fast forward to the final answer if you'd like, or you can watch the whole video and see how I, do the, how I complete the questions myself. In any case, just make sure you get used to the types of questions you could see, because very similar questions will appear on your final unit test. So in the white box here at the top, I have all of the transformations with their appropriate letters. So A representing all the vertical stretches and compressions, the plus minus out in front of it representing any reflections over the x-axis, the K value representing any horizontal stretches or compressions, remembering that it's always the reciprocal, and the plus minus out in front representing any horizontal reflections over the y-axis. The D value tells us if we're moving left or right, and the C value tells us if we're going up or down. So here are a few examples of questions you could see on a unit test that would utilize all of these different transformations at once. So example one, for these two parts, describe the transformations on the graph f at x. So for these, there's no parent function that is given. It's written in function notation, and we just need to describe what the different transformations are. So for these questions, the first thing I will always look at is to see if the x variable inside the function notation is by itself. I notice that here I have it's 3x, not just x. So I have to factor out that 3 first. So this is the same thing as writing y equals 2, and then the function notation. I'm going to factor out the 3, and I'm left with x plus 3. Now that I've factored out that 3, we'll have a much easier time reading what the different transformations are. So to start, this 2 out in front, outside of the brackets, is or represents a vertical stretch of 2. The 3 inside the brackets, but in front of the x, tells us this is a horizontal stretch or compression, and because the number is greater than 1, it represents a horizontal compression of 1 over 3. Remember, it's always the reciprocal. Lastly, we have the 3 that is being added to the x inside the brackets, and so we can read this as the d value. Remember, it's backwards thinking, so this means that we're shifting everything to the left 3 units. And there we have our three different transformations for that one. Let's try b. So again, I look at b, and I notice that I have an x here, but I have a number in front of it. So I need to factor out whatever is in front of that x from it. So I can rewrite this as y equals, and then start the function notation, factor out the negative 2, and it's okay if you put this in square brackets too, it doesn't matter, it might make things look a bit easier. And when I factor out a negative 2, I'm left with an x, and then minus 4. And then this plus 5 is on the outside. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 different transformations. Three of them representing or dealing with horizontal transformations because they're all within the function notation, and one of them on the outside which represents or deals with a vertical transformation. So the negative is a horizontal, uh, re horizontal reflection over the y-axis. The 2 is a horizontal compression of 1 over 2. The negative 4 means that we're actually moving to the right 4 units. And the positive 5 on the outside means that we're moving up 5 units. So let me write those down. And there we go. I'll just identify them for you. I'll just identify for them for you on here. So I have my reflection right here. I have my horizontal compression right here. 
I've got my shift right for right here, and of course my moving up five right here. So this is the type of question that you will see uh, in your homework and also most likely on the unit test. Let's see some more. So example two. For each of these parent functions, and given what the different transformations are, can we write what the equation would be for the image function in xy notation? So we're going to write them as y equals, and then using the parent function, what would it look like? So for both of these, let's just start by writing down what the function notation would look like with these different transformations. So let's start by writing y equals, and figuring out what I need to put inside my function notation and outside my function notation, depending on what I have. So first of all, I have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. We know that that goes on the outside of the brackets because it's vertical. So I'm going to put a 3 out here. A reflection over the y-axis. So remember, reflecting over the y-axis affects the x values. So I'm going to need to put a negative inside my function notation. And translating left two units, well, that means that, again, affecting the x value, so it goes inside the function notation. So let's move left two units. I'm going to take my x and go plus 2. Remember, that's what left means is adding 2. It's backwards thinking. Now I put it in brackets here on purpose uh, because I know that this negative had to have been factored out. So remember to do that when you do the question. If you just put negative x plus 2, that negative would need to be factored out. And in fact, that means we're going in the wrong direction. So put it in brackets to help you out. So this is what it would look like in function notation. Now how do we write it with our parent function 1 over x? Well, it's pretty simple. Start by writing 1 over, so y equals, and then 1 over. And then wherever you see the x, that is where the function notation, or what is inside the function notation brackets, gets replaced to where that x is. So instead of writing x, I'm going to write negative bracket x plus 2. So this x got replaced by what was normally inside the function notation. And so I'm going to put a big bracket around this whole thing. And this 3 was out in front, so I'm going to write that just out in front right here. And there you have it. Now I could probably clean this up a little bit. So remember, anytime you have a number multiplied by a fraction, that number can just go into the numerator. So this would be the same thing as saying 3 over. That negative can come up to the numerator, so I can say negative 3 over and then x plus 2 at the bottom. And this would be that function written in xy notation using the parent function 1 over x. Now if I really wanted to I could do the same sort of thing with uh, let's say the parent function was the radical function, so it was a square root function. If I wanted to write it as a, ra as a radical function, uh, this is what it would look like. So instead of it being 1 over x, remember it's just the square root of x, so I would say y equals, the 3 would be out in front again, I have a square root, and then the x gets replaced by negative x plus, negative bracket x plus 2, And there you go. This would be what it would look like if it was the radical function that was the parent function. So you can see it's pretty easy once you have it written in function notation to put it into any of the parent functions uh, just like that. Okay, let's check, check out the second one. Our parent function is the quadratic function, x squared. Uh, so again, let's write this out as a function notation first, and then we'll put it into our parent function. So y equals, I'll write out that function notation right here. And let's see what we have. So we have a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 half. Remember, anything horizontal dealing with the x is backwards thinking. So we see compression by 1 half, same as saying 1 over 2. That means that I'm actually going to have a 2 out in front. It's the reciprocal, right? OK, translating right 5 units means that in brackets with the x, I'm going to go minus 5, because it's right 5, backwards thinking. And then translating up 3, remember up 3 
is on the outside out here, plus 3. So when I want to write this with my parent function, f of x equals x squared, I can write it as y equals, I replace the x with what's inside the function notation, so 2 times x minus 5 gets replaced to where that x goes. I'll just clean this up right here. 2 times x minus 5. And then all of this gets squared. That whole thing gets squared. And then I have plus 3 on the outside. If you want, you can expand this out in here. So this would be the same as writing uh, 2x minus 10 all squared plus 3. And there you have it. Alright, let's see one more example of what of a type of question you could see. And this is uh, now going to be graphing using all the types of transformations. Okay, so here you do see we have a radical function here. Again, I have a number in front of the x that isn't factored out. So the first thing that you should look for is to factor out that number in front of the x. And uh, what we want to do here is graph <coughs> excuse me, graph the function and uh, use an RST chart, get our key points and find their image points. Uh, so, but, but before I even start with this RST chart, I need to rewrite this with factoring out that 4. So let's rewrite it first. So y equals negative 2 on the outside of the radical sign. Inside the radical sign now, we're going to factor out that 4. So 4, bracket, x, and then because I factored out a 4, the 16 turns into a 4. There we go. And then plus 3 on the outside. So when we look at these different transformations, I have, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five different transformations. Uh, I'm not going to list them for this example. It doesn't ask me to, although on a test you're most likely going to have to, so make sure you know what they are, but I'll say them. So going from left to right, I have a negative out in front, which is a vertical reflection over the x-axis. Vertical means I'm affecting the y va values, so I'm going to multiply all of my y values by negative 1. The 2 means that I have a vertical stretch of 2, so I'm taking all my y values and multiplying them by 2. The 4 inside the square root sign means that it's affecting the x values, and remember it's backwards thinking, so it's 1 over 4, or a, vert or a horizontal compression of 1 fourth. So all of my x values are being multiplied by 1 fourth, or a quarter. Uh, the 4 inside the brackets with the x means I'm moving everything left 4, or subtracting 4 from all of the x values. And the 3 on the outside means that I'm adding 3 to all of my y values, or moving up 3. So I don't have any horizontal reflections over the y-axis for this question, but each of the other ones do exist. My key points for the radical function, remember it's the radical function, so uh, I've memorized these key points, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and uh, the optional one, which I'll use, why not, 9, 3. These are all going to get mapped to their new image points based on our RST chart. Okay, so let's start the x values. Each x value I'll multiply by a quarter and then subtract 4. So 0 times a quarter is still 0, then subtract 4, I'm at negative 4. 1 times a quarter is a quarter. Quarter minus 4 is negative 3 and 3 quarters, or we can think of that as, I'll just use decimals here, negative 3.75. Four times a quarter is one. One minus four is negative three. And nine times a quarter is nine quarters, or 2.25. And then minus four, I end up with negative 1.75. My y values, I'm going to multiply them each by negative one, then two. So in essence, that's multiplying by negative two, and then adding three. So 0 turns into 3, 
1 turns into 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. And 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. And there are my four image points. Now, going for a scale for what I could draw here, um, you know, it looks like I can make each of these boxes still equal to 1. So let's see what happens here. So I'm going to draw my parent function first. I have points at 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, and all the way here, 9, 3. I can draw a nice curve through here. There we go. I'll label them at the end to so see where I have room. And now I'll put on my other image points. So at negative 4, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, oh, up, 1, 2, 3. Negative 3.75 and 1. So negative 3.75 and 1. That's right around here. Negative 3 and negative 1. So negative 1, 2, 3 and negative 1. And negative 1.75 and negative 3. So 1 and then almost 2 all the way down to negative 3. There we go. Now, be careful which way you draw it. Do you start from this dot and go this way, or do you start from this dot and go this way? Well, look at where your image is. So I start at 0, 0 and go this way. So 0, 0 was at negative 4, or uh, its image is at negative 4, 3, which is this one right here. So I start from here and then go outwards like that. So I start from here, and I go down, and then through these points just like that. Remembering to go through all the points, continue and put an arrow. I'll put my labels on here. So this is my uh, image point. I'll put the entire formula here. So y equals negative 2, and then 4, bracket, x plus 4, and plus 3 at the end. Label some key points here, so 0, 0. Oh, sorry, that's not 0, 0. The image point here is at negative 4, negative, or negative 4, 3. I've got one point here at negative 3.75 and 1. And I have one here at negative 3, negative 1. And labeling the other one, I've got 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. Put on the equation, y equals square root of x. My axes here, x and y. And it looks like I'm done. So, that's how you graph using an RST chart for all the different types of transformations you can see and a combination of all of them. Hopefully this helps you with the practice questions that you're given in the homework. Uh, good luck with your homework, and if you need any help, make sure you bring your questions to class. Thank you.